let's talk about how the microstructure uh, changes <coughs> as the uh, system evolves uh, changing temperature. Since after all, we, we now know uh, how the phase compositions change and the phase fractions change. Pure nickel, pure copper, and again we'll pick our X and I star somewhere around there. Okay, so mix some copper and nickel together. We know the phase fraction. Sorry, we know the the uh, uh, molar fraction uh, that we're putting in of each. We go up. High temperature, we melt it, and what we have is we have all liquid phase. Great. To come down, we cool. We're in the liquid plus alpha region. We can determine that there's going to be a round at least the way I drew it, has around uh, 5 alpha is around. So if we wanted the alpha, we take the little one divided by the big one. That looks around one third maybe, which makes the fraction of liquid around two thirds. The fraction of the, of the phases present have to sum to one because they're fractions. So uh, when you're working on exams or homework or whatnot, uh, if you calculate one, the other one you automatically get by just taking one minus. And we know the composition of alpha right there, X and I call this uh, L1 and X and I R1. So that means that the microstructure, if we were to look at it, would look like this. We now have alpha phase and liquid phase. The alphas are going to nucleate. Uh, we talked about nucleation uh, before, and we know that. Typically, you nucleate little spheres, and the spheres uh, grow out, and that's how they, they grow in the liquid. So the composition of alpha, X, and I, left one, no, sorry, right, right one, sorry, or here. That's the composition of the alpha phase. Composition of the liquid phase is the left side, X and I, left one. Okay, I'm going to change colors and we can talk about cooling down further. At that point, I got this and it looks like fraction of alpha, so that's going to be the lever away from the alpha divided by the total lever length. And that looks like uh, ooh, maybe 10%, 15%. And the fraction of the liquid then is around 85%. Composition of alpha is determined by going over, drawing a line down, And that's going to give us, uh, I'm going to call that X and I R2. X and I R2. And the composition of the liquid comes from going over here, drawing a line down. X and I L2. L2. And we're going to have something that looks Kind of like maybe 
maybe. So some of these are going to grow together. Liquid. So you're going to have mostly alpha, some liquid. Some of the alpha might have bumped and grown into each other uh, and made phase boundaries, but mostly there's going to be liquid between them. And it's, it's worth pointing out here that uh, as we approach the solidus, the composition of the solid gets closer and closer to that of the uh, total system. And same way, as we get closer to the uh, liquidus, the composition of the liquid is going to get closer and closer to the composition of the pure system. And lastly, let's say I cool down now the fraction of alpha is equal to 100%, fraction of liquid is equal to zero, composition of alpha is equal to x and i star. So we have something that looks like that. All alpha. And this is kind of the basics of how to read uh, the phase diagram. Now, something I should point out here that I think is fairly important, uh, this reading is all in equilibrium. Right? So when we read from this table, we're saying, okay, I know the composition of alpha is this, but it's all of the alpha. And same thing over here, when I read the composition of alpha, it's over here closer to nickel. And that is all alpha as well. So going from here to here in temperature, we're seeing a redistribution of the uh, copper into the nickel that uh, changes the composition throughout the entire alpha phase, going from there to here. Uh, so this is, this assumes either you're cooling sufficiently slowly that it, that it can uh, uh, equilibrate. Or it assumes relatively fast diffusion. All phase is homogeneous. And that's a big thing because we're assuming it's equilibrium. Now, we use phase diagrams as, as a means to work with non-equilibrium situations. And in fact, uh, you can think about cooling, <clears throat> excuse me, you can think about cooling in isomorphic uh, phase diagrams uh, in a non-equilibrium basis. Uh, in terms of what we call coring. So one way you can think about uh, non-equilibrium thermodynamics is if you start up here, this is going to be uh, copper, nickel, X and I star. Now, uh, liquid, Liquid. Now, what I could say is, okay, I cool down. The first, the first liquid, sorry, the first solid to form here has that composition. And I alpha one. As I keep cooling down.
the composition keeps changing. X i n i alpha 2. X i oh x n i alpha 3. And then lastly, x n i alpha 4, and until finally you have this. Now, if it were equilibrium, as we went down, there would have to be rapid diffusion inside the solid to rearrange. But if we don't allow that, if we cool at, at a moderately rapid pace, then what's going to happen is we will get liquid and we will get little nuclei of alpha phase that have the composition X N I alpha one. If we cool further, we'll still have those nuclei, but then we'll also have a region which is a little bit less uh, nickel, contains a little more copper. Cooling further. liquid. And now, even further, it's a lot easier to draw with a pencil, uh, the degree of dirtiness. But at any point, when we start looking at these, we can start marking things such as in the very center, it's X N I alpha one. In the far exterior, it's going to be X N I alpha. And I guess in this case, I call this uh, three alpha three. And at the end of the day, coming to this last little bit that forms, We're going to have grain boundaries. In the center of the grains, it's going to be nickel rich. When we get out, it's going to be nickel poor. So in the center, of the grains, it's X N I alpha one. And in the boundaries, it's going to be X N I alpha. Well, let's call it X N I star, right? Because that's the last place it touches. So this is non equilibrium. cooling. Uh, it's kind of the first simplest way to think of it. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Uh, when we start getting into uh, multiple solid phases, because we have to talk about diffusion into these two phases, uh, and we also have to start thinking about things such as undercooling uh, for transitions. But uh, this simple example is kind of the, the, the best first example of how non-equilibrium knowledge can come from an equilibrium phase diagram. And this, this whole thing here, this is called coring. And uh,